All right, welcome to the inside of the cabin where I'm going to give you a little tour of what we're doing. People have been asking. And another thing people have been asking is what's different about this cabin versus one of the sheds you can rent to own. Because we've had both now. I built this one by myself. And we had that rent to own cabin that wasn't going to be big enough to make it our house um, that we sent back. This one is half the length of what the other one was, but um, there's still plenty. This is not going to be our permanent home like we thought we were going to make the other one our permanent home. This is just our weekend cabin, a place to come and hang out, but I can show you some of the differences in what, you know, I've noticed in what they did and what I've done. So first off, I'm going to show you the layout we have inside here. This is 12 by 16, and this is how we're going to make it work. If Gail, I've got Gail in here for scale. This is our <laughs> not, kitchen? Not just her good looks. That's our kitchen. That's going to be the kitchen area. Can you explain how we're going to... Kitchen sink is going to go here. Yep. And we have out the barn that we got. Kitchen sink is going to go here. We're going to put another window in here. We're going to have a collapsible bar area. We found some barn wood in the barn that Joe's going to get planed and fixed up so we can have a bar and then it'll go down here so it'll lay flat. Uh, it'll be on hinges. Shelves, yeah, some shelves up here and some shelves outside the window, some hooks for some pots and pans. Uh, maybe a little bit of storage underneath the sink, but we're going to have the bucket there. For well, I have a drain because I'm putting in a septic. Okay, well. So it'll have a regular faucet and drain. All right, then this is our bathroom over here. Bathroom area. Got it will room. have a shower. The outdoor shower is just for nice weather to rinse off after a day of working. Okay, maybe. But that's going to have. A little closet, some yeah. shelves for some towels. Yeah. yeah, this is the bathroom. Stand right here. Okay. The bathroom wall is going to go where that double stud is. So there's enough room in there for a shower stall and a commode and maybe a small sink. Actually, I think it's going to come over a little further. Yeah, it might have to. I don't remember exactly. But I'm going to put a barn style sliding door on that uh, instead of a door that opens and closes. It'll have a slider that looks like a barn door. So that's the bathroom area. Here's and then like she said, maybe, you know, some shelves along that wall next to the bathroom with towels and washcloths, you know, things like that. Then, now I'm going to, I'm standing in the kitchen area now. And I'll try to zoom in on how far Gail is away at the other end of the house, of the cabin. <laughs> this is the living room. Uh, yep, that's going to be the living room area. Uh, with a futon or something here, or a small couch, haven't decided yet. The sitting area. Sitting area. Uh, over here will be the small wood-burning stove in the corner. It's not going to be an $800 stove that's no. going to heat 5,000 square feet. Right. <laughs> Just a small one to keep us a little bit warm, that's all we need. We have yep. blankets. And stuff like that. It'll be flat top so we can put a coffee, you know, boil water on it or, you know, cook on it even. Yeah. We're going to have a but. little place because we are going to have the TV here. <laughs> <laughs> For those nights we don't want to watch TV. And then... And this half is going to have the vaulted ceiling. Yes. To make it seem larger than what it is. And then we're going to have a ladder and... Our, try to climb up there to go our sleeping area yeah. will be in that loft. That is 12 feet wide, and I came out 9 feet, I think. So that'd be plenty so, of room. So, more than enough room. One thing you have to remember, this is a constant work in progress. There are no plans for this. People have asked, where can I get the plans that you're using? Where did you get? There are no plans. It's just, this is what material I had. And this plans is. Plans right up here. Yeah. In the head. Yeah. This is how big I can make it based on the material that I had. 
So that's why it's the size it is. You know, this floor, look at this floor. That's all from Mail America. That was on the second floor at Mail America. They were going to throw it all out. That's three-quarter inch plywood. And all of our doors so, were discount doors. We got yeah, it's those. all, you Our know, well, they know. We did yeah. videos when we, that door was $40. All the casing and everything um, for that and solid core door. A big difference in our cabin that we built and the one that was delivered was I'm 5'11". My boards are 6'2 and 6'4". The door was like 5'9". Yeah. And we all had a duct had, in the door. Yeah. Now, this that was, was in the cabin, the shed that we had delivered that yes. we were going to convert. Now, some of the differences I said I was going to point out. Those walls, because, you know, that's moved down the highway. And for the cost, they don't want to... Uh, uh, you know, you can only move a certain size without getting special permits and escorts and all this money. So, with the height limitations of 13 or 12 foot or something like that, is all the higher it can be. And you notice the roof on that shed didn't have a very steep pitch to it um, because of that. And the walls on the inside were about 7 feet high. And they took the door and had to cut it down. Now that's a full size 80 inch door that we've got. They had to use a door that they had to cut down to, it may have been six feet uh, at best. The walls were the height where I've got that Z channel you can see on the inside there. That's about how tall the walls were, about seven feet on the inside. And they call the shed that they rent you 12 foot wide. To be 12 foot, that's the maximum width they can carry down the road. So the 12 foot is from the end of the roof, the very end there, to the other side the end of the rope so there was very little overhang on those um, and very little pitch to them and you saw one of the things I was having to do and struggle with was add all this structural support to the rafters and stuff there was no ridge beam or anything like that this I built with an 812 pitch those are probably 412 at best um, so that they're legal to carry down the road. That's in Ohio. Now other places may be different. The maximum width in Ohio is 12 feet. So since the edge of the roof is the 12 foot mark, on the inside you really had less than 11 feet. Um, the inside was probably you know, 10 foot 8. Even though they said 12 foot. <laughs> it's about 10 foot 8. This cabin on the other, you know, side of it that I built myself here on site is actually 12 feet wide, the cabin itself. The roof extends over 8 inches on each side. So that would make theirs like 13 6. <laughs> but, or... 13, 4, something like whatever. Anyway, that's one of the differences. These studs in the wall are actual 8-foot studs. They're not the pre-cut studs, and they're not 7 feet high like the ones in the sheds that you get. They're actual 2 by 4 by 8 on 16 inches on center. Actual headers over things versus what the shed had. You could look at my videos of the shed as I was working on the inside trying to frame part of it out. I couldn't do a loft in the one that we had rented because there was no, at, you know, you look at the, where that white line is, that's the Z channel for the siding. 
that was the height of the, the rope line was there. So if I went across with a board, I mean, it would have to be, you know, I'd have to duck underneath something. And there was no wall. See, I've got about, I don't know, 15 inches of wall. And then I have the roof going up. So that's plenty big enough for a sleeping area, a sleeping loft. And again, this is going to be a weekend thing. This is not where we're going to live. If we had to bug out in the SHTF event, then we could live here. We could make it to where we live here. I'm not worried about that, but I'm not building it for that specific purpose. Um, I've got double top plate. That one had a single top plate. That one had seven foot studs. I've got eight foot studs. They didn't have eaves built to any kind of structure to support anything. Um, I was going to have to figure out ways because they took the two befores and turned them sideways. That was that was that matches that in rafter. So there would be no way to hang, you know, drywall to it properly because you know the plates running the normal way and then the cripple studs up there they turn sideways so you went out of a little ledge you'd have to figure out how to do extra framing there was a lot of extra work in the shed that you bought to make it one of these uh, to make it a standard type home and uh, so yeah I in hindsight would much rather build my own now, renting one of those to own is a small amount of cash that you put up front, and you have shelter immediately. Um, I think just building that one up to add all the extra support that it was going to need and add the things that you would want in it would cost you know more than what I'm building this for. This, if I had to buy every piece at retail, buy all the material, I'm going to, I mean, it's going to be, a, I will, what I will do is draw up a set of plans and a bill of materials list and actually price it out. But I'm thinking, I'm going to come in at less than $4,000 for this build. If I had to go to Lowe's today and buy every piece of material that I'm using, I'm going to be less than $4,000. And that rent-to-own shed that we had was going to cost four or $5,000 just to fix up on the inside. And with the three-year plan of paying for it, it was going to cost about $18,000. So, you know... If you are able to do any of it yourself, do it. This was not that hard. There's two of us that's been working on it. And taking our time, you know, I mean, we could have been done a whole lot faster if we just dedicated the time to it. And I had all the material. I mean, we're on a buy-as-we-can plan. Uh, so I couldn't, like... Plus, we have jobs. Yeah. I couldn't like have everything. To, if I could have had everything out here, I could have taken three or four vacation days and we'd have had this built and done with. But I can't have everything here that I want. So as we do it, you know, we do it. But that aside, the differences in the build are, you know, rather dramatic in my opinion. Now that I see it, now that I know... I would never buy one of those again to convert into a home. Um, just the this happens to be sitting on two by eight floor joists across those beams. Now two by sixes, if I had to buy them, I would have just bought two by sixes. But I had all the two by eight, so that's what I used. And the six by six beams that are underneath that supporting it. Um, I think I can feel a big difference in walking on this floor versus walking on the one that was in the shed. Because these, I have two by four, or two by eight floor joists. 
their floor joists were two by fours turned sideways 24 inches on center that were on four by fours like skids that was their beams where my six by six beams are carrying this they had four by fours uh, spanning the 12 feet so this I is so much more structurally strong than one of the sheds that they build. It's cheaper. It's more the size of a home, what you would want, and nobody has to duck. You saw Gail could stand in the kitchen there or in the bathroom without having to duck. Now Alex might have to duck. <laughs> no, I've got six foot six height in there in those two rooms. Then I got the loft on top of it, so that's why I said the other one could have been done. It had a seven foot wall. You know, I put the, the two by sixes across there to make a little loft area and I'm, you know, ducking pretty much. It may have been, now that I'm thinking about it, it may have been about seven and a half foot. I have to go back and look again. But I know every stud I, I had cut for walls, I had to cut down. Um, I couldn't use, even the pre-cut studs were too long. Um, but I don't remember what I cut them down to. But those are some of the differences. I got three quarter inch plywood for a floor, which is what I would have bought. This is so solid inside by comparison. So, I'll work up a price list, a materials list, if I had to go to Lowe's and buy all this. But I know that 12 by 32 shed that we were buying first and last month's payment we had to pay and they delivered it and set it up and by the time we paid it off monthly it would have been right around eighteen thousand dollars that we paid for that shell and it was nowhere near as substantial as this and I think in the long run we wouldn't have been happy in it later on down the road. I think after a few years of use, they start deteriorating um, because they're built as sheds. They're not built as homes. So I think you just you just have to do too much work to them to bring them up to, to where it's going to be, you know, as substantial as one of these that you can build on your own. But that's our little 12 by 16 cabin in comparison to the shed we had bought. Hope this made sense. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you stick around and watch me finish it all. Because it's coming. It may take a while, but it's coming. We're going to do it. So actually with the deck, we're about 18 foot wide. There's our shower. Say goodbye, dear. Goodbye. <laughs> this is Joe and Gail out at the cabin out at St. Bernard Acres. That is all.